Hi, this is Trey Patchett, and this is uh, my comic review of three comics, three number one comics of the DC Comics New 52. As you know, DC Comics decided to redo 52 of their titles and come up with all, they revamped them, and they did 52 titles, and I have three of them here. And I've done two other reviews before. If you check my channel, you can see the other reviews. I did it on the Justice League number one and the Batman number one. Okay, these three, let's start with the first one is what I was looking forward to the most. Uh, it's uh, Superman number one. This is written and illustrated by George Perez. He's a famous favorite comic book artist of mine. Okay, and let me just show you. This starts off, basically the story starts off with the Daily Planet being taken over by a new conglomerate. Okay, and of course Clark Kent's not happy about it. And let me just show you. Uh, there's a nice shot in here. I'm getting shot right there, and you can see that good enough of the Daily Planet being blown up, basically. You know how when they take down a building, and let's see, and the new planet, which is right there, that building on the left there, okay, and right here, where my, no, not there, right here is the new gentleman that's taken over the Daily Planet. As part of his media empire, and of course Clark Kent is not there, of course because he's supposed to be unhappy, and another reason because he's exploring everything as Superman. So there's a nice shot of um, I can see that good enough with the reflection. But there he is, in the new suit. Okay, okay, and the story basically is about uh, Superman and Clark Kent mostly being unhappy with the new takeover and stuff and want nothing to do with the new publisher and stuff and of course an alien threat happens which I want to show you a nice shot of it okay let's see uh, I just want to show you a few pages in this without getting bogged down okay uh, there's an, actually a scene of Superman right there chasing some crooks some criminals Right there, I don't know if you can see good enough. There it is. See, the art is good in this. Like I said, George Perez is a good artist. Okay, and this story is basically about an alien threat. Uh, I guess some pride creature that Superman has to be, who's basically trying to destroy all of Metropolis. And of course, Superman has to stop him. There's another nice shot with a nice explosion down there at the bottom. Right, right there. And Okay, more shots of the creature and Superman battling him, the creature. Right there, he's formed like a human form, and he's actually the creature in this is actually speaking an alien language. But Superman sort of recognizes as Kryptonian. And anyway, Superman battles the creature, and there's another sh great panel, two shots right there of Superman trying to battle the creature. Okay, right there, and the reporters down there trying to capture it on film. Okay, and let's see, another great shot right there. Some action sequences. Yeah, I like the artwork in there. And okay, and there's another, I think one final watch shot of Superman actually coming up with a way to stop the creature. Mostly here if you see that. Right there, that's a nice shot. And there's the final shot right here, actually, of the battle being ended. Superman hurling a the giant uh, Daily Planet globe that got this, that got this, you know, taken that got taken down in the beginning of the story. He hurls out the creature and hurls it into space, where the fire creature dies because of the lack of air. Okay, but the main thrust of the story is something that I heard months ago. Was and we'll let you see how it plays out. I don't know if you can see it good enough though. Okay, so Clark goes to Lois Lane's apartment. We look uh, right here to apologize for his for acting, you know, all standoffish about the new conglomerate taking over the Daily Planet. Okay, and then if you look right there on this panel right here, you see Clark going to explain to Lois how he wants to apologize, but of course he runs into Lois and her new boyfriend. And of course, Clark can't can hear. Yes, the super hearing, of course. And he hears them talking about him as he's leaving. Okay. And it's a very awkward moment. <laughs> and 
I don't know how I feel about that Lois Lane. And fuck, they went through all this trouble of getting them together, and now they broke them up. I guess that's just a new take on it. And I don't know if it's just strictly confined to this Superman comic. I have to look in the other comics and see if they uh, they hold that throughout the whole universe. They separated them. I guess they wanted to do a new take on it. Okay, which leads to um, the next number one comic I got is the Teen Titans. Number one, right there. If you look on the cover there, you look to the... Uh, doing this, but uh, the only character that I recognize right there is the Flash. And this is uh, Cassie, who's uh, the new Wonder Girl. And up there is a Superboy clone. And right there is Red Robin, the Tim Drake version. Okay, and basically this comic is about people, there's some cool artwork in it. First, I'm going to show you that first, this great opening shot of Kid Flash. Of course, is arrogant. And arrogant. And of course, he almost he causes trying to help stop a fire. There's a nice, some more nice artwork in there. He makes it worse. <laughs> and basically, this story is about uh, metahumans. I guess in the DC universe, mutants we call metahumans. You know, like in Marvel, the mutants we call mutants. In the DC universe, they call metahumans. And basically, this story is about um, people getting fed up. There's a nice shot of Tim Drake there. I'm um, reading about a. Uh, how the government is sick of the metahumans and somebody's going to do something about it. And sure enough, there's a nice shot again of Tim Drake right there. Nice panel there. And of course he finds out this, this group comes to visit him called, uh, I don't get the name right, uh, called Nowhere. And they're here to capture him, <laughs> of course. Look on the panel there, on this panel there. They show up in his apartment. Okay. And of course, him being trained by Batman, okay, he's going to escape, okay? And there he goes, escapes and manages to blow up the apartment at the same time. And there's a great shot right there of him flying off. And on the, on the right here, on this page right here, is Cassie, who's the new Wonder Girl. And there's a nice shot of her being stopped speeding on the highway by supposedly a cop but of course it's not a cop it's somebody here from nowhere here to stop all men trying to capture the metahuman that she is and she's trying to first deny that she's a metahuman but of course she is and red robin tim drake shows up just in time right there the saver okay and he tries to persuade her to to come with him and she's trying to have none of it <laughs> But of course, there's a heli nice shot of the helicopter coming to get them, where she finally has to admit who she is. And there's a nice shot, and I'll show you that, of her, with her full powers right there. Okay? And her destroying the helicopter right there. And, okay? And there's, the most important part is this part right here. Excuse me. This part right here. Where you see the guy that was in. Uh, Tim Drake's apartment, trying to capture him early, he goes to the scientist, to this lab, and tells the, the lady scientist, which is right here, that we need to, that we need to uh, get the project ready. And she's trying to tell him that the project can't be ready, that the project's not ready. But he said, no, you don't understand. The project is ready. We need him now to handle these many humans. And what is the project? Da, da, da. Superboy. The clone of Superboy right there. Okay. And that's that comic. And the last comic that I have is Superboy. Okay? Superboy number one. Okay? And that's basically where the Teen Titans comic left off. This is a sort of, I guess, the beginning part before you get to that part. <laughs> because there's a nice shot right here, opening shot of Superboy as a, you know, the clone of Superman, of course, and a tank right there. And there's a nice shot. I like the artwork in this, too. The scientists sitting around talking about Superboy, and he's can hear everything. And they're talking about how it's not working out, and they're gonna have to get rid of him. And uh, basically, they try to get rid of him. They try to, I guess, cyanide him to death. When there's a big explosion, and he escapes from the tank. There's a nice shot right there. And of course, it's all a ruse, actually, because in reality, I signed it. Actually, that's just a shot right there of him uh, 
after he escaped from the tank with the lady scientist. That's all a ruse, actually. What in reality is, uh, is there's a nice shot of him a couple of months later, it tells you in a panel. That's him there with hair, sitting there. And they basically ran a scenario to trick him into believing that he's living a normal life. You know, like Superboy, growing up in Kansas with, with parents and stuff, and a boring life. And there's a, he's in a great shot right here. Uh, there's a great shot, excuse me, right here. Well, how he's talking about how his life is boring and nothing much happens in this town. And then you actually see on this on this panel right here, it's actually all being monitored by the scientists. So they actually got him in, a, I guess, a virtual simulation, you know, living a normal life. He thinks, he thinks he's living a normal life. When in actuality, they're experimenting on him to, to see how he reacts. And of course, the people from the last comic, from that group nowhere, you see the guy right here, all right, right up, right up here, that guy right there from the from the uh, Teen Titans comic book, he's there saying that we need Superboy, release the Superboy, okay? Because that, 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 if you look at that last panel right there, I'm going to hold like this so you can actually see it here. Okay, we need the Superboy to get to the metahumans. And there's our Teen Titans right there. You see that nice shot of uh, Red Robin, Kid Flash, and uh, Wonder Girl, and I, think, I don't know who the other two characters are. But you see that nice shot right there? And then the next, says, the next story says Alien Prison Break. Okay, and so I guess it all ties together. And that's, I guess, eventually somewhere along the line, uh, Superboy is going to turn on them and he's going to become part of the Teen Titans. Okay, so that's my comic review of these three uh, titles. Again, let me uh, show you them. Superman number one, the biggest change. Lois has a new boyfriend. <laughs> that's Nart Clark. Okay, the Teen Titans. This is, just, I guess, like the formation of them. Okay, that's the beginning of in the formation of them. And this comic book is just the origin, kind of, of, of the clone of Superboy. And how he's going to be used to capture the Teen Titans. Okay, so that's my comic review update for these three comics. I think I have two other comics that I have to review, and I'll do that later in another video. And just let me know what you think about that. Do you like the new DC52? Please leave your comments, and, and please rate the video. And take care. Until next time, Trey Pastor saying so long.